Shut up and sit down. Hey everyone, this is Tony Day. I wanted to make this video to try to explain the uh, two very different statements that are going on with this um, debate. It's not really a debate where people are saying expose at 1000 to help with your highlights and what that actually means. Basically what's going on is that there's a disconnect in this discussion where people like myself are not talking about exposing for a curve. And I'm trying to say that, you know, the ISO doesn't really change your exposure at all. What really changes is when you expose for a curve using the tools in the camera by changing your ISO before capture, the ISO level is not doing anything to the capture. You're actually changing the real exposure to expose for that curve. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I mean, okay? So here's the manual and here is the dynamic range chart. Now remember before we talked about how middle gray, as you go from 100 to 1000, it's kind of shifting like this, right? It's kind of doing this stair stepping thing where it says you get like 6.8 stops over middle gray and 6.3 stops below middle gray. Well, we determined that really this doesn't really matter as far as the capture. But what does matter is how it affects the tools. When you change the ISO level, the middle gray point will shift up and down with the exposure tools. And if you're exposing for this middle gray point, it will change how you would need to actually expose the shot in order to achieve what it's talking about. So here's another page of the manual and it talks about the false color. And you'll notice if you have the camera, when you change the ISO level, the what this value is, middle gray, which is this green value with false color, it will change depending on which ISO you pick, right? So if you're exposing for middle gray, if this is how you're doing your exposure techniques, which isn't the only way to expose by the way, but if you are using middle gray as what you're trying to expose for, you will change how you're exposing your shot based on the ISO you choose. So again, this isn't really the ISO that's doing anything different with the capture. What is changing is how you use that curve to expose the shot. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I have several different shots that I have to show you. The first one is shot at ISO 100 and I exposed for middle gray according to the false colors. So this card was in green, okay? If we look down here at the waveform, you can see where middle gray is and you can kind of see what's going on with the exposure, okay? And you can also see this flat line over the top. Now let's go to another shot where it's the same thing at ISO 400. Now, if you look, this middle gray didn't really change at all, right? because it's exposed for this card. But if you look at the background, there's a lot more highlight details back there and you can see how this has changed quite a bit. Okay, now the reason why this happened isn't because ISO 400 is any different as far as the capture than ISO 100. It's that I'm changing my actual exposure and the curve is lifting the shadows here we are at ISO 1000, and if again you look at the waveform monitor, middle gray is about the same area as an ISO 400, 100 previously. And we do have, if you just look at the background, we do have what looks like more highlight information just on an overall glance, right? So in order to achieve this, I had to actually change my real exposure. I had to close down the iris, I had to use a faster shutter speed, and it gave me this picture, okay? So if we compare to ISO 100, you can see how different it looks. But again, this is not because the ISO levels are doing anything different with the capture, okay? And I'll prove this in a second. But let's look at these and apply a grade. So I've applied the grade and I'm going to click on Highlight Recovery, okay? And in this middle node here, I'm going to just pull down the brights so that we can see what's going on. Okay, so with this contrast pulled down, you can see that we've got a flat line over the top, right? So that's saying that we've blown these highlights in the background. If we go to ISO 400 and we do the same thing, 
you see we don't have that flat line over the top, right? And then in ISO 1000, we can see, again, we do not have the flat line. And I'll just kind of go back and forth between these. And I think it's pretty clear what the difference is here. Again, this none of this is due to uh, the ISOs doing anything different. What's changing is your actual exposure and how you're using the tools. So the difference here in what people are arguing, it, they're just like two different arguments that are missing each other, okay? These three shots, basically what they represent is just different techniques for exposing a shot. If you want to use the curve at ISO 1000 because it helps you to make sure that you don't blow your highlights while you're trying to expose for middle gray, that's totally valid and I understand that, okay? But at the same time, if you're trying to argue that ISO 1000 like intrinsically has better highlight recovery or protects highlights or anything like that, that's not true. It's just a difference in how you're trying to expose your shot and how you're using the tools. That's a completely different thing. What happens with the dark areas, this is zoomed in on the black sheet that was hanging over the red bag. So if we go in like pretty far, I have to do this really far, even though you wouldn't do this in real life, just because, you know, um, YouTube compression won't show everything, but I'm looking at it at 315%. The, the darks look pretty clean. I go to 400, they're a little bit noisier now. Okay, they're a little more purple, you can see more color noise compared to 100. And then at 1000, there's a heck of a lot more noise. Okay, so when you're using this method, this is why like generally I kind of stick to ISO 400 because I don't want my shadows to get noisy like this. You know, I'd rather cut down on the highlights with any other means than underexposed shadows if they're going to be this noisy but that's just the way I do it right you don't have to do it the same way I do and again just to reiterate this has nothing to do with the ISO capturing anything different it's just how you expose it if you're closing down the iris or changing the shutter speed or you're using ND filters or whatever it is to try to get your your highlights to not be overexposed compared to exposing for middle gray at, at say 400 for example you have to realize that your shadows are going to be a little noisier simply because there's less exposure going on those shadows since you're actually changing the real exposure just to reiterate the point that i was making before about iso actually not changing your real exposure of the image when you shoot raw i took the same settings from this shot where it's exposed for middle gray at ISO 1000 and I changed the ISO to 400 and I changed the ISO to 100 okay and you can see that they look different when we first look at it right it looks different but when I change it to a thousand and I click that highlight recovery box just for safety you can see that they look exactly the same um, just to hopefully not belabor the point, if I change them all to 400, you'll see it's the same thing, right? Like, you know, I go between these three, exactly the same, but if I was to say, you know, these three over here, if I change them all to a thousand, for example, they won't be the same, even though all the settings are the same otherwise, right? See, they do look different. These look different because they're exposed differently. The real exposure, the real exposure is different between exposing four middle gray at 100, exposing four middle gray at 400, and exposing four middle gray at 1000. That does change things. However, it's not the ISO that's doing it, it's you. You as the user using those curves supplied by changing ISO that changes what's going on, okay? So I hope this made sense. I hope this kind of puts that debate or whatever to rest because it's not really a debate really it's just two different sides like missing each other entirely i think okay so i hope this all made sense and i hope you learned something with this and uh, let me know if you got any questions below mm -hmm.